Do you know the 14 traits of successful chiropractors? We've interviewed some of the top chiropractors in the industry and have identified the common traits that they all share. Jump on over to www.chirobusinessmojo.com to get your free report today. Welcome to the Cairo Business Mojo Podcast, where we deconstruct the methods, marketing, and mindset of successful business people and chiropractors from around the world. And now your host, Dr. Richard Day. You found me. I am Dr. Richard Day, and this is the Cairo Business Mojo Podcast. Hello once again, and thanks for spending a little bit of your day with me. Ever wanted to write a book, but don't know where to start? Do you have a lot to say and you want to get it out there to people? You've been thinking about writing a book, but you just haven't had a chance or the time to do it or to get it done? I'll tell you what, my guest today has a solution to that problem. Dr. Rob Hannipol attended the University of Maryland and Life College of Chiropractic in Georgia. He's also manipulation under anesthesia certified through Texas Chiropractic College. Dr. Hannipol owns and operates Active Life Chiropractic and Wellness in Plantation, Florida, and he is the author of Just Say Yes to Chiropractic, Your Best Choice to Achieve Optimal Health and Wellness, Naturally. Along with Dr. Gary Trupo, he started TotallyBookedPractice.com, a service to provide chiropractors and other practitioners with a system to add nationally published author to their title. Welcome, Dr. Rob Hannipol. Well, thank you for having me tonight. Well, thanks so much for uh, spending some of your time with us today. We really appreciate it. I always like to start with why. So why did you become a chiropractor? Okay, well, uh, basically, uh, I think as, as a lot of us chiropractors do, we usually have an experience, uh, you know, when we're younger or, you know, going to a chiropractor or basically, you know, we just have a lot of congruent, you know, thoughts about health care. For uh, myself, I knew it when I was 11 years old, when I was sitting in the back of my mother's car driving home from the pediatrician and uh, she said to me we were going to the pharmacy to go pick up some cough suppressant and I said why are we getting cough suppressant she said well the doctor wants you to not cough it means it's going to suppress it it's going to put it down and I said to her well why would we want to do that does my body want to get rid of something isn't it trying to you know trying to heal and get better and so you know I thought about that fairly recently and realized, wow, you know, that, that was, uh, that was chiropractic, you know, a real chiropractic way of thinking. Um, so never really had the desire for, you know, for healthcare or medicine, but chiropractic really always resonated with me. So when I was, uh, when I was a teenager and went to a chiropractor for, uh, actually for a back problem and I used to read all the posters on the wall and, and, and see everything that, uh, he had available. Again, it, it just really, the whole philosophy uh, really made a lot of sense to me and resonated with me because, you know, I was just much more into, uh, you know, healing and getting better without drugs and surgery and, and you know, treating, you know, myself rather than treating the effect. So, uh, you know, it just, it just made a lot of common sense, really what it was. Well, how long have you been in practice? Been in practice in Plantation, Florida for the past 21 years. Um, and over that time span, uh, you know, branched out, uh, between a partner and myself, we've had, we've had over 11 practices in multiple states, but my plantation, uh, area office has always been my mainstay. That's always been, uh, you know, my home. Well, I want to shift and talk about what you guys are working on right now. It caught my attention. I think it's a great thing. Why don't you, in a nutshell, go ahead and tell us about Totally Booked Practice. Sure. Well, Totally Book Practice really um, arose out of a need. And, you know, I practice in an area in Plantation, Florida, that you're going to hit the floor when you hear this, but basically within a one-mile radius of the practice, there's approximately 100 chiropractors. <laughs> you got to be now kidding. Wow. I'm not kidding. Now, that's not 100 chiropractic offices per se, but 100 chiropractors, that means, you know, there may be a few chiropractors in an office, independent contractors, associates, things like that. But that's that's an unbelievable amount of, of competition, somebody would say. So, you know, coming from a background prior to chiropractic school, I was actually in the field of marketing and management consulting. And I really had to put on that, you know, that, that marketing consulting, you know, hat and say, well, how do I differentiate myself stand out from the crowd, how do we distinguish what we're doing, um, because we're going to get swallowed up by really being seen as a commodity. 
And, you know, what I realized was that, you know, if, if you're a nationally published author and you have a book, you're automatically perceived as an expert and an authority and you have a lot of credibility. So, you know, what uh, we did for my for myself, my practice was, uh, you know, uh, put a book together and really saw how it just changed uh, perception and, and, and tried a lot of different uh, techniques and strategies with the book and saw, you know, what works and what doesn't work and really perfected that um, and really, you know, thought about it and said, wow, you know, if this works for my practice and we're really getting the word out there in the community, you know, this could really be a movement or a game changer, you know, for the profession because so many people, you know, in our global population don't even know what chiropractors do. People have, many people have a, uh, you know, uh, misinformed uh, perception of what chiropractors do. So um, I got together with a great friend of mine that I went to chiropractic school with, uh, Gary Trupo, and he had a, um, a practice in another area. And, and Gary and I decided to form our company called Totally Booked Practice, which we are a really, I would say, a new patient marketing company for chiropractors, um, not to be confused with a book publishing company. We utilize uh, the creation of a book to really educate the local community on chiropractic. And there's a much greater you know, passion and purpose to what we're doing, being chiropractors, which is we know if we had thousands of chiropractors throughout the world, and we have, we have uh, clients right now in Dubai and, and, and in multiple other countries, but if we have thousands of chiropractors all over the world getting their books with their philosophies and their thoughts and their techniques and their strategies on, on, on health care out to their communities, we would really cause a, a major shift uh, in how people think because books are so powerful. And, and you know, when, when you have a book, you're perceived as the most credible you know, expert authority on the subject. So uh, it's really grown into something a lot bigger than you know, a book and a practice. Well, you mentioned that it's a game changer, and uh, I can really see the value in educating the public in what it is that we do, especially if you know a lot of us are writing books and educating people within our communities. Uh, in what other ways is it changing the game? What doors is it opening? Uh, well, you know, having a book can get you into places that you couldn't get into before. You know, uh, we have doctors that are getting on TV, doctors that are getting on on radio, and, and having you know weekly and, and 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 daily you know radio shows gets you into uh, talks and seminars, um, medical referrals, attorney referrals. Uh, having a book again just changes somebody's perception of you. You know, I like to say that, you know, when you choose a professional, uh, let's say, you know, you want to choose a professional um, uh, financial planner, you know, who would you rather choose? Would you rather choose the, the average financial planner or would you have more confidence in the financial planner that actually wrote the book on financial strategies? Or would you rather choose, you know, an average uh, lawyer or the attorney that wrote the book on uh, the specialty of law that you're looking for? And the same thing that goes, you know, with what we do as chiropractors. You know, would you rather, you know, just choose the average uh, uh, one of 100 chiropractors down the street or would you choose the chiropractor that wrote the book? Having a book greatly enhances the way people look at you and opens a tremendous amount of doors. And it, it's really, you know, what we call it, uh, we came up with uh, uh, this name because this is really what happens and we call it the celebrity effect. And what it does is it really turns you into uh, a local celebrity. Uh, you know, our program is not to, you know, uh, make our doctors into uh, New York Times bestsellers. You know, that's not what we do. It's not about selling the books. Our program is to help chiropractors become the number one go-to chiropractic authority in town, attracting, you know, 
massive amounts of new patients and getting into places that they couldn't get into before because, you know, let's face it, you know, there's still sometimes, you know, we get stuck a little bit with that stigma and people don't know what chiropractors do. But when you have a book and you're the authority, people give you, you know, that second chance. They give you a chance. They, 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 they want to know, you know, what you're all about because they basically, you know, what they're thinking in the back of their mind is, well, you know, he wrote a book. Uh, you know, he, he must still have a, a level of credibility. You know, let me hear what he has to say. We find that all the time. Well, the points you're making, I think, are excellent points, and I really see the value and the benefits of, of what you're talking about. So let's get down to brass tacks. Take me through how totally booked practice works. What if I come to you and I say, uh, I want to write a book, or, or I've got one written, but I don't know what to do? Okay, so right, we, we do get those two scenarios. We even meet a lot of doctors um, that will tell us, you know, yeah, I'm already writing a book, and I ask them, well, great, when would you get started? And they say, well, I started about five, six years ago. And then we have a laugh, and I tell them, well, guess what? We can get this done within 60 to 90 days. And they say, really? And then we get started. But uh, basically, you know, again, you know, I, I really would say, you know, we're really more of, of a new patient, you know, uh, education and marketing company, not a book company. The book is the vehicle that's going to bring qualified patients to the office. And what my partner Gary and I have done is we've created a book called 28 Ways to boost new patient volume using your own book. And what we stress and what we do is we actually make sure that we set up appointments and times and actually uh, teach and coach our clients on utilizing those 28 ways or, or the ones that they resonate with the most based upon who their ideal patient is and, and what they really want to, you know, the way they want to practice and who they want to treat. But we come up with strategies on how they're going to attract the right patients into their office using their book. So in terms of the steps and what happens is, you know, being in chiropractic for, you know, for so many years, we've uh, actually created a library of topics on all topics of chiropractic, you know, in terms of chiropractic philosophy, all kinds of techniques, including, you know, uh, diversified and, and um, even things like, you know, decompression, um, different types of instruments, laser therapy, you know, you name it, we have the topics. I have to stress that the books are not, because people get confused with this sometimes, the books are not a template. The books are personalized. It's, it's, it's our clients, you know, your, your personal, it's your thoughts, your ideas, your philosophies. Basically, you know, it's your book. And, and I have to explain to people all the time that when, when you go to the bookstore like Barnes & Noble and you see these books written by celebrities and professionals and politicians, you know, they always have a co-author. And that's to be expected. And the same thing with what we do. You know, our patients understand that we're really busy doctors and, of you know, they appreciate the fact that, of course, we're going to have some help writing our books because, you know, I laugh sometimes when, you know, we'll have uh, somebody that may want to do a program, but they say, well, I really didn't write this myself. And I tell them, well, you know, 90% of the books that you see in the bookstore weren't, weren't written, you know, strictly by that person, but it's their, it's their information. You know, we help the process. That's how books are done today. So basically, we have a library of topics, and um, our clients will choose the top topics that they're interested in. And the way that we help them with this is we say, you know, who's your ideal patient? Who do you want to attract into your office? You know, where are they? How do you want to communicate to them? And we guide them along. So they'll pick the top topics. So if, let's say we have a chiropractor that's very um, philosophically, you know, oriented and they have um, a high volume cash practice. Well, they're going to choose certain, you know, certain topics that they're interested in versus um, a chiropractor that's involved more with um, um, uh, personal injury, let's say. But we have something for everybody. And once they choose those topics, what we do is we have one of our staff members um, get on the phone and actually interview the doctors, ask them questions about those topics. Just like, you know, we're talking today, you know, how'd they get involved in chiropractic? You know, um, tell us about your practice. How'd you get involved with this technique? And they expand upon all these topics. So, that, so from those interviews, what we do is we start to 
know, write the book uh, with the doctor, and, and the doctors can get as involved or, or not as involved, really, as they like. Some of our clients, you know, um, you know, are involved with every single word, and other ones, you know, trust uh, us to take their words and, and put it down in paper. What we do next is we edit all the work, and we proofread, we format, we design, we even ISBN code you know, every book, and then we print, publish, and deliver the books to our clients. Before the books are delivered to the clients, we get on the phone, and we have the, the strategy and marketing conversation, you know, because we don't want them to get all these books and then have the books sit in their office and not do anything with them. Because what we find is that for every seven to ten books that our clients, our chiropractors get out there into the community, they generate a brand new patient. So there is a huge incentive for them and their staff to get these books out into the community and teach people about the value of chiropractic. And we go over all of the strategies with them and then we Keep them accountable to that. You know, we want to make sure that they're successful. And we have some doctors that are just killing it with this program and have built huge, substantial practices with our program. So just to be clear, these are not PDF e-books or something on a Kindle. This is a physical book, right? Right. This is a physical book. Now, we do get requests to, you know, make an e-book for the clients, and we'll do that. But it's not as impactful You know, I always say, you know, some of the people that receive the books are going to read them. Some of them are going to read maybe a chapter or two. Some may not read them at all. But the impact is going to be the same. The impact is, wow, my doctor has a book. And I I need to see the best. I need to see the expert. And that's what it does for you. Um, You know, a book is so much, a physical book is so much more powerful than a PDF. Uh, for the reason, you know, that I'm going to tell you right now. I mean, have, have you or any of the audience just, just think, you know, have you ever thrown a, uh, business card away? Or has anybody ever thrown a brochure away or a flyer? And I'm sure everyone says yes. But now think about it. How many people listening have ever thrown a book away? Always oh, before, I always ask this when we give a presentation or a seminar, you know, maybe one hand goes up because there's just, you know, it just seems sacrilegious, you know, that there's some you know, stigma to, to throw a book away. So even if, if it's a book you're not interested in, it's going to be on the bookshelf. It's going to be on the coffee table. It's going to be somewhere that it's not going to get thrown away. And I like to call it passive perpetual promotion. Because what happens with the books, because they don't get thrown away, is our doctors, including myself, will see new patients coming to the office from books that were actually given out six months ago, a year ago, or two years ago. Because when that person or somebody that that person knows perceives or has a need for our services, we're the number one choice. You know, it's like, let me, you know what, I have this book, this doctor gave it to me, or the staff member gave it to me, or I went to a book signing. This is the one I'm going to go to, because he's obviously the best in town, because he wrote the book. And that's how it works. Well, what a great differentiation tool, you know, and like you said, a great way to stand out from, uh, you know, everyone else who maybe isn't pushing themselves into that upper echelon. I can tell you, I've got a couple of friends who have put out books. Uh, one of them put one out, I want to say, five years ago. Before, you know, I think people realized it was a little bit easier than maybe it is now. But uh, she began getting booked at corporate talks in other states, and they would fly her out, and she'd talk about corporate wellness. I mean, it opened doors for her within months of coming out. Right. Having a book, again, the the perception of who you are and what type of doctor you are, it goes, you know, it, it goes through the roof. Because you, you just stand out from everybody else. You know, you, you, you're, you're perceived as, as special. You know, I was just watching a news program and, and the uh, commentator, you know, is always touting, you know, his, his new book that comes out. 
and I see the new book, and then I see the co-author underneath it, and I know exactly how we put it together because this is what we're doing. <laughs> um, but but uh, again, you know, everyone everyone's impressed. You know, so people get very impressed that that you've you've put a book out. And what's beautiful about this is it is it is your thoughts and your ideas and your philosophy. It's all about you and what you're all about. But we figured out an easy system to, on on how to get it done because we know that. Most chiropractors are just so busy working in their practices and the day to day, the patients, the administration, all of the you know the issues that come up you know in, in a day. It, it could, it's exhausting and there's no time. So you know it's almost impossible for you know the average chiropractor to actually do it themselves. You just it just you just can't do it. So we take that burden and and we get it done. But like I said earlier, you know there's a much bigger passion and purpose to this. Thousands of chiropractors with their books, getting it into their communities. I mean, just think about the impact. How many, you know, how many kids are now maybe not going to have tubes in the ears because they went to the chiropractor first with the ear infection? Or how many people are going to avoid, you know, dangerous back surgery because they received, you know, a book from somebody that received that book six months ago and then they went for chiropractic care and now they didn't go for back surgery. So, you know, we really feel like, you know, there's a much bigger piece here, you know, there's a much bigger um, mission, you know, to what we're doing, and we want to get more and more chiropractors, you know, with their own books. Uh, in terms of um, financial success for a chiropractor, it's, 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 it's very large. You know, one of our best clients went from a practice that was collecting $60,000 per month, so it was, it was a good practice, to collecting over six million dollars a year and he touts the fact that once he got his book done and he got you know on the radio and on the tv and started getting a lot of referrals from all some professionals that his practice just went through the roof he reorders with us all the time and we know that our doctors are calling us they need more books they need more books they need more books we know they're extremely successful and the doctors that we don't hear from we know they're not using the program. So the whole key is to get your books out there in the community and your practice will grow. The, the doctor that I was just talking about that is super successful with this, he tells us that one book that he gets out there typically gets him two to three new patient referrals. And I'll tell you, I don't know how he does that myself because that's not typical. I'm amazed at how, you know, but he is just so enthusiastic about it. But what we find is that for each book, um, or, or, or typically a new patient uh, will come after about seven to ten books are handed out there, whether it's to, uh, you know, internally. And we teach this in the 28 Ways to Boost New Patient Flying I'm using your own book. We, we teach the strategies. So we, we, we teach internal strategies, external strategies, and digital strategies and help our doctors choose, you know, which strategies they're going to use and which staff members that they're going to designate to help with this program and, and, and how to do it and how to be successful with it. Well, I've got a couple of questions on the specifics of, of the book itself. Are these hardback or, or soft cover? Typically soft cover. We find that there's really not a, a big uh, difference in impact because that's really all it's about, right? It's about perception, and the product is what you perceive it to be, marketing 101. Um, so just the fact that you have a book is is enough because the costs of printing hardcover books is is a lot more expensive. If our clients want hardcover books, you know we'll do it, and we we have some great books that we put out in hardcover. But I don't think they're getting you know that uh, really any difference you know in terms of what they really want. You know the return on the investment is they just want to get new patients, help more people grow their practices, you know, have more time, have more freedom, you know, enjoy their lives more. Hard cover, soft cover, it really doesn't matter. So do you find that uh, uh, your clients are selling the books or are they giving them out? Um, okay, we teach our clients to get the books out there, not sell the books. You can sell the books because we do ISBN code the book. We even show you how to, you know, we'll show you how to get on Amazon and the different sites. And you know, we do that primarily because, you know, from a perceptive standpoint, again, it legitimizes, you know, what you're doing. You have a book that's out there to sell. I've sold my books on Amazon. You know, I don't know who has bought them. I'm not really promoting it. 
Um, but we do ISBN code the books so they can be sold. But here's here's the rub. Okay, let's say the book is listed at nineteen ninety five. Okay, and you sell ten books, you're going to make two hundred dollars, correct? Yep. But let's say you gave ten books away, and the national average case value of a patient in this country right now, given the doctors that practice cash, given the doctors that do a lot of personal injury, and given the doctors that do functional medicine, you know, really, which is probably the highest case value, but let's say the national average is 2500 So I would give out seven to 10 books all day long to get back a return of $2,500, then sell 10 books to make 200 yeah, I see the strategy in that for sure. Um, right, again, because you know we're not teaching the doctors to become New York Times bestsellers. If they're looking for that, we're the wrong company to go to. What we want to do is, again, make you the most well-known, well-respected, go-to-to chiropractic authority in your town, and that's what we can do for you. So what's the average page count in the book? Average books are anywhere from 120 to 150 pages. Okay. It's a substantial book, you know, just like any book that you pick up at the bookstore. Well, let's see. I got one other question here related to just the specifics and I guess the technical side of things. Uh, minimum order. Is it on demand or is there a certain minimum order you're going to get? No. Okay. So, you know, we have, we have a, a number of books and, you know, it's either 500 book program, a thousand book program, or a fifteen hundred book program. I like to call it the fifty new patient program, hundred new patient program, and fifteen and hundred and fifty new patient program. Because like I said earlier, if it takes you seven to ten and, and, and I think a lot of guys exaggerate. You know? So let's say it takes ten books. So the five hundred book program should bring in fifty new patients. Okay? And all you have to do is take that 50 new patients and multiply that by 2,500, and that should bring you in $125,000 worth of income. And think about how you're impacting those 50 new patients and their families also. And those 50 new patients are also going to get your referrals. So from a uh, ROI standpoint, marketing standpoint, there's nothing, I mean, in my mind, better out there, the return on investment is is unbelievable. Well, let's get to that next question, which is, what is that investment? What's it going to cost me to use your services and um, and to, to make this something we want to do? Sure. Okay. Well, when doctors reorder with us, obviously the pricing is a lot less expensive because we don't have to make any changes. But we do we do tell the doctors that you know, the book is really, look at it as an evolving, living, breathing document, you know, where let's say you start getting involved with something new, uh, like neuropathy or something like that. So when you reorder, you know, we can put a, a new chapter in there, we can change the cover, put a big starburst on there, you know, now a new chapter on neuropathy. I mean, it's something that can keep on evolving. So the key is to just, you know, work with us and get it done as quick as possible and get it out there and start using it. It doesn't have to be perfect right away. You can keep on working on it. So the reorder pricing is um, obviously the least expensive because when we first work with you on the book, there's a lot of work we have to do up front. Like I said, we have to do the interviews, the editing, the proofreading, the formatting, cover design, ISBN coding, publishing, and printing. So, you know, there's a lot. But we've been told by a bunch of industry experts, actually one whispering in my ear recently at one of the big shows, that our pricing was too low. And I thought it was, I thought it was kind of funny, but I said, you know what? I said, you know, we're chiropractors ourselves, and we want to, you know, provide, you know, our fellow chiropractors with something of, of great value, and we're not going to, you know, we don't feel the need to be higher. But basically, he thought we were about three times as he thought we should have been about three times as high as we currently are. So we also make it very easy for the doctors to get involved with the program because for each of those levels, the 500, 1,000, and 1,500 book program, we offer a one-time discounted payment, we offer a 12-month payment, and a 36-month payment. Okay, so you know there's a lot of numbers here. I don't know if you want to go 
over all the numbers, but I can tell you that the 500 book program, you can get started in that program for as low as 232 a month. Okay? So if you want to do it monthly and break it out, it'll be 232 a month. We, you're getting a ton of new patients, you know, way before we even get paid on this program. And we take all the risk. Okay, so, you know, our doctors, you know, they may, you know, uh, even reorder in six months, four months, but they get to utilize the book. They get to build their practices way before we even get paid, but we put all the money up front. So I, I want to make sure I'm getting that right. It's 232 a month over a 36-month period? That's if they want to break it out, okay? So gotcha. for the 500-book program, okay, it's typically sixty nine ninety seven one one one-time discounted payment. Okay. And again, we do all that upfront work to get this put together, and we like to get the books done within sixty to ninety days. Wow. Okay, so it's it's, it's that quick. You know, it's not a six month a year process. You know, we want the, we want our doctors to be successful quickly, so we work and get, we 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 you know we get it together fast. So it could be it's either sixty nine ninety seven one time discounted payment, or six twenty two a month for twelve months, or two thirty two a month for thirty six months. As the doctors get into you know higher quantities of books, the pricing you know um, you know reflects that, and the value is even greater. So, for instance, for a thousand books, it's eighty nine ninety seven one time discounted, or seven ninety nine a month for twelve months, or just two ninety nine a month for thirty six months. So they're getting five hundred more books just for you know sixty something dollars more on a thirty six month deal. And then for fifteen hundred books, it's ninety nine ninety seven, eight eighty eight a month for twelve months, or three thirty two a month for thirty six months. So for a hundred dollars more in a thirty six month deal, they're getting a thousand more books. Not a thousand more books, but they're getting a hundred more new patients. Okay, yeah. so a hundred more new patients, you know, times obviously the twenty five hundred. Two hundred fifty thousand dollars worth of collections. Yeah, and I want to just stop real quick and just make the point, and that if if some of the listeners out there don't know what's involved in in making a book, I mean, um, I've looked into it, and I had a patient who actually was an editor, and she was talking about how much work does go in up front into uh, you know putting the book together, and then they get a lot of uh, what you know they receive manuscripts that the author thinks are great, but really. There's a whole lot in terms of proofreading and time that goes into into books to make them readable. And she said you just have no idea. And then if you've ever tried to self-publish, you go look at the options. You know, the fit. You want fifty pound paper? Do you want a gloss cover? Do you want a cloth cover? Do you want? I mean, it's almost mind numbing right, right. the options. To, if you were to try to navigate through that yourself, you could. But I think it's going to take a lot longer than the ninety days you guys <laughs> offer. Well, and, like I said, we meet doctors all the time and tell us, well, you know, yeah, we're doing it and. Uh, we're happy and it's taking us four years, five years. <laughs> right. You know, I mean, what, what is that value of time? Right. You know, so, so you know, when we look at, at other companies that um, are involved in, in, in publishing, um, they're at least, I mean, we see them three or four times higher than we are for what we do. And not only that, what's the value of the strategy and coaching that's involved? You see, we have un, unlimited inbound calls that we'll take to help our doctors be successful. So if a doctor calls, you know, and they say, you know, I'm set up a call because I have a, um, an event coming up and I want the best strategies on really how to handle the book signing and how we should do this and who should help me. And we discuss that. We discuss all the strategies on how to utilize the book to get more new patients. If a doctor's struggling a little bit, we'll go over, you know, and, and tweak what they're doing. So, you know, it's not like they get the books and then we're on to the next. Our doctors have unlimited access to get the, the help and the strategies. Both Gary and I have business backgrounds and consulting backgrounds. So, you know, we really you know, you know, put, that, put that extra effort out there to really ensure that the doctors are successful. A public, all a publishing company does is they'll help you get you know, your book done. And if you want other services, they're going to charge you for that. We don't charge extra for for any of the the coaching and, and, and strategy that's involved. Yeah, and I think 
really executing it is where it's at. Like anything, you're going to, it's not enough that you wrote the book if it's sitting in a box in your closet. You know, it's, you've got to have it right. out there and know how to implement this valuable tool that, that you have. Right. And there's simple things to do. I mean, you know, we teach, you know, right away, you know, just, just go get a little easel at, you know, the local craft shop, the Michael's craft shop, you know, put a copy of that book right in your reception area when a, when a patient walks in, they see right away, oh, I'm in the right place. This doctor, you know, wrote the book on chiropractic. We teach to, you know, how, how to, how to, um, have your staff hand the book out to every new patient. You know, we don't want the doctor handing it out. That's, you know, too much self-promotion. But the staff's going to hand it out and then we teach them what to say and, and, and how to tell the patient that, you know, you're, you're the man, you're, 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 or a woman, you're the chiropractor to go to. You're the best in town. And to the point where that patient's going to get so excited, you know, if they're going to ask, can I act, will he sign it for me? Does he have time to sign the book for me? So the doctors are signing the books. You know, welcome to our practice. Here's your wellness. Let's get you healthy. Uh, we teach the staff how to give a second copy to the patient on subsequent visits, you know, and, and, and tell the patient, you know, Shirley, you're doing great here. And, you know, we know that there's, you know, friends and family members out there that are, that are suffering with the same headaches that you are suffering from, you know. Why don't you give them a copy of the book? And a really interesting phenomenon happens all the time, see it all the time. When a book is handed to a patient, many times, I mean, they're just really impressed and they, they're like, wow, you know, I wrote the book, but then they'll give it back to the staff member and the staff member gives it back to them and it kind of goes back and forth a little bit. And what happens is that the patient, you know, looks at the book as, you know, this is something of value. I mean, it says 1995 on there. So they can't believe that you're actually giving them a copy of the book. Mm. And once you give them the book that has this, again, this perceived and inherent value, then they will ask you, you know, can you sign it for me? So it has that effect. I mean, we call it the, it's the celebrity effect. And, and, and if you don't mind, I can give you a little, you know, little story that happened with this. But, uh, yeah, please do. I was, I was at a local Starbucks and I was standing in line. It was a very busy Starbucks, you know, during lunchtime. And, and I was waiting, you know, online to get my cappuccino and I was just minding my own business. And I heard from behind the counter, uh, the barista yell. She says, Hey, Dr. Rob, Dr. Rob, Dr. Hannipole. And I looked and it was one of those really awkward, uncomfortable moments because she recognized me and I did not recognize her. Mm -hmm. And I felt, I was like really trying to think hard. I was like, was she a patient of mine in the past? Does she know one of my kids? I'm like, who is this person? You know, I, I felt like I should. And then she said, and she saved me because she said, she says, oh, you don't know me, but how come I don't have a copy of your book? And I was, I said, wow, that was one of those, you know, moments of an epiphany. It was, it was like, this is powerful. She knows me. I didn't know her. She asked for a copy of my book. Well, there it is. That's the celebrity effect in action. So what happened was three new patients just from that experience. Because people in line said, oh, oh what, what, what kind of doctor are you? What do you do? You know, and then we discussed, you know, and I'm a chiropractor. And, you know, one person had headaches, neck pain, back pain. Three new patients just from that Starbucks experience. Wow. And that's the kind of thing that happens all the time. Uh, you know, uh, restaurant, local restaurants, you know, the person sees that you're a chiropractor and, and, uh, they'll say, you know, hey, you know, do you have a card for me? And what I tip, what I teach our doctors to say is, well, geez, I don't, I don't have any cards on me right now, but then reach into your bag and say, you know what? I have a copy of a book I wrote recently. You know, would you like a copy? And they say, really? Like, I can have that? Sure. And the next thing that they'll tell you is, well, well, could you sign it for me? And, and there you go. So, you know, we actually teach the doctors to get rid of your business cards. Business cards are not necessary. Your book is your new business card because it's a thousand times more powerful than a business card. It is a business card on steroids. Yeah. And there is no need to have business cards anymore. You keep a carton of books in the trunk of your car. <laughs> Well, I'm going to shift away from the book for a bit. I want to come back to you later and ask out, ask you how people can find out more. But for now, let's talk about a little bit just about success in general. Um, you've obviously had a lot of success over your career, not only with your practice, but now uh, getting into the publishing business. But we learn a lot from our successes. We tend to learn more from our failures. Is there anything, or, or not necessarily a failure, but an obstacle, something you've overcome 
So is there something you could share with us and some of the lessons you learned? Well, I think 100 chiropractors with a one-mile radius of the office is a real challenge. (laughs) (laughs) And, you know, uh, developing a way to differentiate and distinguish and promote successfully, you know, has really been the way to over to overcome. So, you know, you really have to step outside the box, you know, and, and think different, and stand out, and really, really step into the uncomfortable, the uncomfortable zone. Because growth can only come when you, you get uncomfortable. And I think too many, uh, you know, chiropractors, um, you know, are a little bit uh, afraid, you know, to, to step out of the comfort zone. A little bit afraid to say, well, you know, too many people are going to know, you know, you know what I do and who I am, and and you know, but you you have to you have to be able to do that in order to be successful. So you know, that's what we talk a lot, of, you know, with our doctors, you know, because you know, in order to be success, you got to put yourself out there, and you have to have thick skin, and you can't really care, you know, what other people say, um, because most people, you know, when you become successful, they become jealous. So you really got to uh, get out there. And, and uh, you know, uh, one book, and we're talking about books, that really I thought was, was great at, at teaching a lot of these things was from um, uh, Dan Drubin. I don't know if you're familiar with it or not, but no. it's called um, Busting Your Rut. And that book really had a profound impact on me because the main theme of the book was pain. And what Dan would say was, he'd say, look, you're either in the pain or you're in the pain. And which pain do you prefer? And what he meant by that was, you're either in the pain of complacency and just kind of dealing with things and complaining about things and just kind of being average, or you're going to get into the pain of growth and the pain that comes along with being successful. And the question is, which pain do you prefer? Do you prefer the pain of complacency? Or do you prefer the pain of growth? So I prefer the pain of growth. And that's what we teach. Wow. I haven't heard that before, but I, I really like that. I love that message, you know, because I guess there is nothing in life that's just all roses. And I think maybe if we're in our little comfort zone, it feels good. And, uh, we think that, uh, other people who maybe have more than us haven't made, but, uh, <laughs> You know, there's a guy. I don't. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. Well, there's okay, a one... you know, people. People that are successful. They're always working hard. You know, they're always working on the craft. You know, I mean, I mean, you've heard the expression. You know, when you're coasting, you know, you can only coast, coast down, downhill. Yeah. You can't coast uphill. You know, you got to keep on working at it. You got to keep on honing in on your craft. You got to keep on getting better every single day. Yeah, there's one of the guys on Shark Tank. His name is Robert Herjavec, and he's a millionaire, sure. you know, <laughs> uh, does very well. He went through a divorce a couple of years ago and uh, got into a deep depression and contemplated suicide. And I think for a lot of us, we look at this guy who's on TV. He's got money. He's got success. He could afford the world's best therapist. He's obviously empowered himself to bring himself to great heights. And yet he was at the point where he was actually really considering suicide. And, you know, I think there is a whole lot of, uh, like you said, it's pain, pain on both sides. It's not a perfect world. But like you, I would much rather be in the pain of being successful and reaching higher. Right, right. I mean, there's a lot of gratification that comes along with that, too. But, but again, you have to be willing to put yourself out there. you got to be willing to, to, to really, you know, they say, you know, to, to get uncomfortable, to, to feel the fear of what right and do it anyway. You know, that's that's really what it comes down to. Because then other than that, then you're just going to keep on getting, you know, the people that say, well, you know, I know I should do this and I should do that and I should have done this. And, you know, Tony Robbins says, you know, these people, they just, they, they should all over themselves. So the key is to just, just, just do it, you know, like the Nike commercials. And uh, we find that a lot of our clients, they, you know, they need a little bit of a, the, the, this kick. Otherwise, you know, they just, they're, just, they're complaining. And we, you know, really try to help the clients, you know, get into that, that, that area of, of growth and, and pushing them into that little bit of uh, discomfort. But we, have, you know, we have ways to do that. You know, there's all different formulas. Um, you know, and we, and you know, and I even teach the clients, they should you be doing this with your patients. You should be empowering your patients and, and, and 
trying to help your patients live, you know, uh, better lives and thrive and succeed. We do this all the time. And what happens is, you know, those patients become so happy with the way that you're, you're affecting them that they want to refer you, you know, more people. You know, you're changing lives. So, you know, you're not always, you know, just adjusting the, the subluxation in the spine, but you got to adjust the subluxation between their ears. Yeah. So, so you know, this this program that we have is is really you know to to grow the chiropractic practice is to grow the chiropractor is to grow chiropractic you know as a whole globally. Uh, you know, th- there's a lot that that we want to accomplish. Well, Doc, let me ask you this: Who are your heroes? I have one hero, <laughs> and unfortunately, he's no longer with us. But uh, that was my father. And uh, he passed away uh, a little over a year ago, mm. but he really embodied uh, uh, really every I'd say a, a bit or a piece of, of you know all the different people out there that you know we all you know look up to. Uh, you know, a great athlete, really a Renaissance man, artist, had entrepreneurial skills, very creative, musician, um, you name it. He had it, and what we what I did actually was uh, we recently uh, developed a new book, um, which is more almost like a chicken soup for the soul book, you know, a collaborative effort, which is what we call the hearts and minds of America's leading chiropractors. And again, anyone on the line today, if they want to get into a book, really, you know, their first book, really quick and easy, you know, all we need is one chapter, and we'll get you in that book. Uh, at least you can get the benefits of being an author while you're working on, you know, your personal book. But um, I actually put him, uh, my father, on the back of the book, you know, while he was uh, running in a race, a picture of him, and uh, dedicated, you know, that book to him. And, again, you know, that's what's so nice about having these books because now I know that, you know, everybody that, that um, I'm giving this book to gets to learn a little bit about, you know, like you said, you know, like, like who influenced me and, 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 and my hero. Um, and all of our clients, you know, we encourage them to, you know, do the acknowledgments, acknowledge the family, acknowledge the people that helped you get to where you are, and do the dedications. You know, it, 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 it's a very cathartic, you know, uh, feel-good experience. Yeah, what a great way to honor your dad. Yeah. You know, and, um, you know, I, I encourage other people to do that, you know, with, with uh, you know, family members, husbands, wives. I mean, you know, what we do as chiropractors, you know, we did not choose the easy route. We did choose the painful route, you know, uh, in many ways because, you know, it's, it's not, you know, we're not the traditional way of doing things. So it really is important because, you know, our spouses and our families, you know, they hear, they hear the frustrations and they hear the things that we go through on a daily basis. You know, uh, uh, practicing, you know, uh, every day, you know, there's a lot of obstacles that you go through. So I really think it's important to, you know, show some uh, gratification and, 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 and gratitude and, and acknowledge the people in your life that are helping you to, to succeed and, and helping you, you know, on your mission to, to you know, teach the world about chiropractic and, and, and help, you know, more people with chiropractic. Because like I said, you know, this wasn't the easy path. I, I really think the easy path would have been to go to medical school. But you can't do something that you don't resonate with. So chiropractic, you know, for many chiropractors, including myself, is really more of a mission. And, you know, um, being on that mission is not always easy. So you, you ha- And it affects everyone else in your life. So you have to acknowledge them. And it makes them feel really good when you do that, especially when it's in a book. Well, what's the best way for people to contact you and find out more not only about Totally Booked Practice but about you and what you do? Well, they can always go to the website, which is totallybookedpractice.com. They can call us at 888-243-2661. And I can be reached on my cell phone at 954-296-8473. You know, I try to be as available as possible to speak to, you know, people that are interested in in building their practices and and utilizing, you know, a book uh, to do so. And I do want to mention that if um, anybody calls and they mention this podcast, we will give a special offer. 
Well, that's great. Well, we are going to link to all of those, plus the book you talked about um, that you recommended people check out as well in our show notes page at www.cairobusinessmojo.com. Dr. Rob Hannipol, I can't thank you enough for taking time out of your busy schedule to come share some wisdom and uh, some information about your book service with our listeners. Well, I appreciate you having uh, me on the line and, uh, you know, really will do anything to help our profession because we are in the most amazing, influential professions, you know, on the planet. We have to get the word out there. Thanks for listening to the Cairo Business Mojo Podcast at www.cairobusinessmojo.com.